transportasi digital di masyarakat menjadi katalis bagi perkembangan data center. Menurut Direktur Sensele Media Global Data Center, Peter Luzi, industri data center perlu mendukung tren dari pergeseran gaya hidup masyarakat yang semakin terdigitalisasi. Peter menambahkan, bergesernya cara hidup bermain, bekerja, hingga semakin banyaknya konsumen dan pengusaha yang menganut dan beradaptasi dengan teknologi digital, mendorong peningkatan dalam kebutuhan infrastruktur digital. Selain itu, pembangunan pusat data alias data center di Indonesia semakin pesat seiring dengan perkembangan stabil ekonomi digital. Ferry Salanto, selaku Head of Research Collier Indonesia, menuturkan perkembangan ekonomi telah mendorong lonjakan investasi dalam infrastruktur digital di Indonesia. Selain itu, penggunaan ponsel pintar dan layanan penyiaran yang luas telah menciptakan adanya kebutuhan untuk penyimpanan dan juga penyebaran data. Lalu sejauh apa potensi bisnis data center di tengah ledakan data digital sudah hadir di studio kami, Studio CNBC Indonesia, Ashraf Higazi, Sagar President Director of Legrand Indonesia. Halo, Ashraf. How are you today? Oh, great, great. Hello, Abraham. Thank you for having me today with you. Uh, okay, and then we start from the first question for you. And then, uh, what, what is Legrand current business like in Indonesia, especially in serving the domestic data center market? Sure. Maybe let me first start by what is Le Grand and what we are doing worldwide before jumping into the Indonesia context. Mm. So we are the global, global specialist in electrical and digital building infrastructure. Worldwide, we did last year around 8 billion uh, euro. Uh, we are around 38,000 employees, to give you an idea of, uh, of the size. Uh, and we operate in, a, in a four different markets, residential, commercial, industrial, and data center, of course. And data center represent 15% of our sales, to give you an idea of what we are, uh, uh, what is Le Grand today. Then after, knowing this, how do we uh, operate in Indonesia? We follow uh, the same structure with four business units that have a dedicated team to address the market. And so we do a lot of uh, certification training to deploy our team, but we also have an important industrial footprint. And this is a very important part because we have our own factories in Indonesia, and this helps us to manufacture fast, even uh, manufacture more, and it helps us to cut the lead time, because the lead time is a very important uh, aspect of data center. Uh, the players in data center wants to produce quickly, and we can support in doing that. Okay, and what does the current data digitalization explosion look like and the urgency of building high density data centers? Okay, so, Uh, it's actually, you can see it everywhere, mm. okay? Because data is everywhere. So what we call data uh, explosion, it has, already, it's al it has already started in 2020. If you look from 2020 to 2023, the data have already uh, been multiplied, the data exchange have already been multiplied by 2.5, mm -hmm. from 1,000 exabyte to 2,500 exabyte. It's now, if you look at our lifestyle, right, uh, and uh, the place where we live or where we work or where we manufacture, those places are using more and more data. We are living in digital buildings. Our factories are 4.0. We are driving cars now that are also uh, charge, charge, charging cars. And Electric then maybe car. they will drive by, by themselves, yeah. right? So there are a lot of data that are being consumed. So it will continue to increase. And the last step that is very important, the last mega trend, it's of course artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is training on a lot of data, so it's consuming even more data. So it's fully reasonable to think that in the next three years, data exchange will even increase, and far more. Now, what is the emergency of building data, uh, high density data center? First, maybe let's define quickly what is high density data center. Um, High density means to have a high level of power per unit of space. So it means with the same space, you are able to power more. So when we look at data center, it means that with the same space, you are able to compute at a higher level, you are able to store more data. So a high density data center is a data center that has the capacity to treat and compute a lot of data. The urgency, I will say, the urgency is more on making sure mm. that the design that we have today for those data centers will still be relevant in the months or years to come. Because the data center industry is a, an industry that is moving very fast. There is a lot of innovation. And the needs of today 
might not be the needs of tomorrow. So when you design the data center, you need to make sure that you embed the new technology to make your data center more reliable and more efficient. Okay, so how about the uh, adoption in Indonesia about the data center? I mean, it's, it's, it's of course, the, the data okay, center. Okay, high density data center. Yeah, the data center industry in yeah. Indonesia is already very big. Huh? Mm. Uh, uh, in terms of co-location data center, you have already on around 150 megawatts uh, installed, so, so, so it's quite big. Now the real question is, where will we go? Uh, what will uh, the data center of tomorrow look? Uh, and what will be uh, the design mm. that, will, uh, that the players will, uh, will decide to have? Ah, okay. Okay. okay, so how does your company integrate the latest technology in high-density data center buildings? So this is actually very important. So until now, mm. the average uh, power of rack worldwide is maybe between 8 to 12 kilowatts. And in Indonesia, it's maybe around 7 to 8 kilowatts. But in the months to come, you will have a big part of the equipment and rack that will become high density, more around 40 kilowatts to 50 kilowatts. And part of it might even go to 100 kilowatts. This is very important because uh, it means that in terms of design, you need to adapt. So what we, how do we uh, support? We support by innovation, because we invest 5% of our uh, sales into R&D. We support by doing acquisition in data center, acquiring companies that specialize in data center. We have acquired 17 companies in data center worldwide mm. since 2010. And we combine all those innovations either from uh, our uh, R&D uh, internal or external acquisition, we combine it together to have one global solution. And with this, we can uh, bring, uh, I give you an example, we have an AI pod, so I will not enter too much in the technical detail, but it's a modular solution that can be deployed very quickly to answer to the need of, uh, uh, of uh, the data center players. Ah, okay, okay, that's right. And what step is uh, Legrand taking to support data centers in Indonesia to make them more efficient? So when you talk about efficiency, uh, there is one uh, maybe figures to know is that 40% of the consumption of data center is linked to cooling. Mm. And this is very important because data center players, they want to uh, maintain their server at a certain temperature using, and using in the same time less energy. Mm. Uh, uh, so to uh, help the data center be performant, we offer uh, passive cooling and active cooling. But as the months come and as inter artificial intelligence is coming in the business, the market is going more towards active cooling now. So that's one part that we do. The second part that we do that is very important is all, we always encourage our customer uh, to measure as much as possible all the data that they have and to have uh, measure at all the steps of the, of the electrical infrastructure. So our tools uh, and our products can help uh, delivering data mm to tell to the customer what's the situation in his uh, premises. And in a way, you can see it. It's like those products are giving you the heartbeat of the data center. It will tell you here the temperature is too high, or here the power, you can save some energy. So that's, that's what we do. We focus on cooling and measuring, oh, okay. mostly. Ah, oh, OK. OK. And how does Legrand accommodate and rapidly growing business needs in terms of data center uh, scalability? So this is actually a very important mm. point. Um, and maybe I can answer to you not only on the data center part, but what we do is that we produce locally. M a lot of what we are selling to data center. And the fact that we produce locally, this helps in terms of lead time, but it also helps in terms of uh, many things, feedback from customer or, or whatever. Mm. That's number one. Number two, we because the data center industry is moving very fast, we give a lot of certification to our teams regularly, on a very regular, regular basis. And we also certify our products. So there are different uh, certifications available in the data center industry. One of it is the TIA 492C. And uh, some customers follow this uh, regulation and we certify our product according to this. Once you cover that, we know that we can give solution to our customer that they can easily scale up. That's one part. And the other part, it's, it's a bit back to what I was telling you on the AI pod. It's a solution that uh, combines all our innovation 
to answer to the needs of uh, data center, either on cooling, space optimization, cable management uh, uh, efficiency, uh, uh, monitoring, all those things, uh, we combine it mm. in one solution that can, after, help the customer to, uh, to scale up his, uh, his installation. As of now, we are talking about more details about the company at mm. our domestic component level for data center industry, or what we call it is TKDN. TKDN and yes. how does Ligra uh, ensure the domestic component level or TKDN standard for its products? Atra. Thank you. It's a very important question. Yeah. Uh, and we have decided at Legrand that we'll uh, manufacture as much as possible. Uh, why? Number one, we have factories in Indonesia. Okay? So by nature, we produce in Indonesia. Uh, after the fact that you produce locally, of course, you can deliver faster to customers. And this is what they want, especially in the data center area. Then how do we ensure that we uh, have an efficient enough level of TKDN? We source as much as possible raw mat locally, which is the first step that you need to look at when you are talking about uh, TKDN. Mm. We uh, use as much as subcon that we can have locally. Uh, and we use as much as our internal resources to produce this specific uh, product. Uh, maybe the last part, we choose also very well what products we want to produce locally, because there are some products that are easier to manufacture locally, and some others that are uh, more difficult, mm. uh, because we want to make sure that uh, what we produce locally can achieve a certain level of TKDN and that it makes sense for the economy uh, locally. So that's what we do. Last point, after we go through a thorough process of localization and checking all the different parts, and then we decide, and then we invest, and then we, we go ahead. Oh, okay. okay, and so what, what a role the technologies such as as AI, artificial intelligence, and IoT play in the data center solution, Le Grand Overs. OK. AI has already an mm. impact on the fact that data center needs to be designed a different way. So I believe we already saw that uh, in the previous question. But definitely, it means that data center cannot be designed the same way as before. Uh, if, we, if we look now at, uh, at IoT, what I can tell you is that uh, some of our products are already uh, connected. They actually uh, use, uh, I can give you an example of a power distribution unit that we have inside the rack in our data hall. Uh, it use, uh, it's connected and to different sensors, and it can give you a, a real-time insight of temperatures or mm. power consume. Okay? And this, then this can help uh, data center owners to take informed decisions if they want to uh, reduce the power in certain uh, place or change the layout or whatever. So we are already embedding that in some of our products uh, today. Oh, okay. And what's the company's view of the current link and match scheme in the world of vocational education and also the industry? Thank you very much for that question because uh, this part is very important for us. Mm. Uh, I was telling you at the start of this interview that we uh, invest in the uh, development of people. Uh, so we also strongly support the link and match. What do we do? Uh, we uh, give internship to uh, some students, okay? We give um, uh, scholarship to our own employees. We develop partnership with some university to develop a common curriculum. Mm. And after this curriculum, those uh, students that are follow can join us. And today it's around 10% uh, of our uh, people that, are, that work with us that are coming from this kind of partnership. So it's, 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 it's quite, quite good. And we have worked with, uh, we have partnered with maybe 21 universities mm. uh, in Indonesia already. Some, it's uh, Paul Street Palembang, Gatmi Solo, uh, University Dipo Negoro, uh, uh, Sampoerna University. Mm. So it's already in our DNA. Mm. Uh, and I think it's very good to align uh, what is happening in the industry and uh, the curriculum in the university. So, so we're actually very happy to, to follow this, uh, this uh, program. Oh, OK. OK. And then what are Ligron plans until the end of 2024, in this 2024? And maybe you want to release new products maybe in, in this uh, year. So what is our plan? Number one, of course, to continue to serve our customer, oh, Okay. to continue to develop our employees. 
Uh, one part that is very important, uh, it's uh, to continue our CSR roadmap because we have a very, very strong CSR roadmap and we want to continue to support our customer to have a, a better, more sustainability in what they do in mm. their installation. Uh, so we focus a, a, a lot on that. Uh, after product release, we have several product releases, but I think the, the, one of the interesting ones is the AI pod that I was just mentioning. Uh, but we'll continue to do all of those things until the, the end of the year. Um, and if I may say, maybe just to tell you a few things about Le Grand, we focus on data center that mm. represent 15% of our sales, it's true. But we also uh, focus on energy efficiency and uh, IoT. And with those three, uh, those three parts that we are calling fast expanding segment, we, we, we focus a lot there and we put a lot of energy to deploy those three parts in our business. Oh, okay. okay, okay. And we move to next question, and maybe this question is be the last question okay. today. And what industries other than data centers are targeted for market development as well? Uh, I, well there are, so we focus on residential, commercial, industry, mm. and data center. But I believe the answer is a bit in, in the last part that I was telling you, so I can develop yeah. a bit. Uh, on energy efficiency, uh, there are a lot of solutions that can help building like this one to consume less energy mm. and then to reduce your carbon footprint. So we focus there, uh, and regardless of the type of building. And we also focus on the IoT part. Uh, as a product are more and more connected, uh, we bring solutions uh, that will help uh, our customer or, or, or user of our product to have more data from our product. So okay, it. okay, so interesting dialogue with you, Ashraf, but uh, the duration is enough here. And thank you for coming in CNBC Indonesia. Thank Success you. and stay healthy. Thank you so much, Papa. Thank you.